Well, this wasn't going to be a video, but uh, I changed my mind halfway through the job. So what we got here is the pan off a of 4L60E auto transmission off this VS Commodore, the dark green one. Um, this can be quite handy, these filters, because on the back of them there's usually a date wheel. And it's showing me... You can't see shit because it's all covered in fluid and stuff, but what it's showing me is the 8th month, 2014. So, it's been serviced within the last three years. Now, I'm pretty sure on this car, if we open this... Uh, hmm... Well, there's a sticker here for something about performance transmissions. And I don't know if what they've done to it, but that says 2008. It's been done more recently than that. Uh, this thing has been pulled apart, not because it needed a fluid change, because as you can see, you probably can't see it. You know, it's due for a change, but it's still a red colour. It's still happy, and there's really not much material on the magnet. I'll drain the fluid out of this and actually show you guys properly, but what it's here for is to change this little bugger. This is uh, a PWM modulated um, pressure control solenoid for the um, transmission fluid line pressure. And uh, it's your set point. As in, you know, the ECU, well, that's variable, but the ECU has a, a you know, uh, I guess a table in it. And what changes is as you, as you boot it harder and put more load on the transmission, usually it it ups the fluid pressure, but you don't want that pressure really high at idle speed or, or low, low, low speed because, you know, it's going to slam into gear um, from, from neutral to drive because, uh, you know, these things have what they call pressure um, accumulators and it's basically a piston in a cylinder with a spring on the back of it. And the point of it is solenoids are usually, the shift solenoids are on or off. They don't turn on softly. So you've got to take up the sudden engagement of um, solenoids, you've got to take it up with, with accumulators, and that's their, their job. It's to smooth out the shifting and all that. But if this guy is uh, giving you too much pressure, usually the coil would go open circuit, I suppose. Um, if, it, if it has gone open circuit or short circuit, the ECU will throw a code. Um, abnormal um, tr transmission, um, abnormal pressure, um, pressure control solenoid, ab abnormal um, current draw. Uh, I believe that's what the code was. I don't remember the number. I'm not, you know, really into fault codes. I really prefer to diagnose things with a multimeter and test lights and, you know, what it, what resistances things should be and all that sort of stuff. Now, I'm not really going to bother measuring the solenoid <laughs> resistance because I'm changing it, right? So I'll measure it later on. But I'll measure the new one. Maybe I'll measure the new one. Um... Shit, I'm, I'm sort of torn between measuring it and just putting the damn thing in, but it's a good idea to make sure the uh, little connector, right, as spade terminals, the female side of it, that is, it's a good idea to make sure the spade terminals are nice and tight on the, um, you know, on, on, on their mates, because if they're loose, it just won't make a good electrical connection. And also, this thing's full of fluid that's, you know, sort of an insulator, or a dielectric, if you like. So anyway, um... Please use lint-free rags. Don't use rags that are going to shed cotton because I found a you know a decent strand of cotton in the auto. So when you're assessing the condition of an auto transmission, it's pretty pretty basic. Apart from the driving tests, um, which you know you don't want it slipping or anything going up hills and stuff like that, you want to check the filter. You can see it's a little bit grey, but that's normal. You know for a filter that's due for a change. But the inside's clean. It hasn't got any um, band material or, or, or friction material in it. Now if I put this on the ground and I dump this fluid, the fluid's also reasonably happy. It's been serviced, you know, regularly in its life, which is good. Um, we're looking at the magnet, we're looking for debris. Now a lot of what's in here actually dropped off the auto when I pulled it off, but this magnet's got a little bit of um, debris on it, but you'd expect that. It's not a new transmission, it's done 308,000 Ks, and this is due for a service. You would expect it to have something on the magnet, but what you wouldn't expect is a real big pile of metal on it, you know, it w would be bad, because obviously it's come from somewhere important. So, I'm not going to crap on for hours on end, but anyway, you've seen the new solenoid. Let me go under here and show you where the old one is. 
Now, at first I was confused because I've never really worked on these things too much. I'm going to try and avoid getting fluid all over the camera because it's dripping off here, as you can see. So these are the shifting solenoids. These are the rear ones anyway. I'm avoiding the camera getting shouted, but... I mean, what we've got here is this is where the solenoid lives that we're changing. That's it there. Now I've actually disconnected this connector already. Uh, I suppose I should have really taken some kind of a note which way it goes around, but the uh, the ribs, and you can see that, but these ribs go towards the solenoid itself, but it's just a solenoid coil. You know, polarity's not going to matter. But all it's got holding it on is a bolt here. I don't know if you can see that because it's all it's dark and everything's covered in fluid and stuff, but there's a bolt there. It's got a little retainer. So this is the valve body of a 4L60E. If you're having um, harsh shifting throughout the driving range, this guy can be your culprit. This is a manifold uh, pressure switch, basically. It's what they call a, um, a pressure manifold switch assembly. And there are just a series of switches. Some are normally open, some are normally closed. And, you know, it tells the ECU what's doing what. Like, shift, so, you know, if it's shifted, you know, because it's, it's got to check to see if it's actually shifted. And it's also checking pressures and things like that. Because, you know, obviously it's got to have feedback for the pressure control solenoid. I'm not entirely sure how it achieves this, but I'm pretty sure it's this guy here. Um, so that's telling it what all sorts of pressures are. That's why it's got quite a number of wires going to the back of it. Um, this, these are the accumulators here. Look, I can't remember which one does what. Uh, maybe that's the 3-4 accumulator. I'm only guessing. I can't remember. Here's another one here. Uh, and where are we? That's obviously the end of your dipstick right there. And uh, that's the manual valve. I'm going to keep the camera away because it's all real, you know, dripping fluid. So I'm going to get this out. It's pretty obvious how to change it. I don't think you guys need to see that. And I really can't hold the camera and do the job at the same time. But I'll show you the old solenoid. If I'm feeling really generous, I might even drag out the uh, multimeter and actually measure the coil resistance. Um, anyway... Let's uh, see what we can do. We're going to measure the resistance of this solenoid coil. I have no idea what to expect it to be. It's 5 ohms, roughly. Now, I'm going to turn this around and make sure it's got no trickery happening here, like a diode that, you know, is polarity sensitive. I can get these in without... Son of a... Yeah, so this isn't polarity sensitive, it's just just a solenoid coil. So, I'm going to turn the meter off. So we're expecting around 5 ohms. I have no idea what to expect from what's in the transmission. I'm going to get my tools, I'm going to take this apart. And how good the focus is on this camera because i got oil all over the lens. Yeah, well, I cleaned it off best I could. Well, we've got the old pressure control solenoid out. Do not, for the love of God, wear anything that you value because you will end up covered from head to toe in transmission fluid. Now, this one we got 5 ohms, roughly. This one, knowing my luck, it's probably a bloody connection or something that's just shouted and the, and the solenoid's probably sweet as. But, ah, anyway, we'll see what happens when we measure this. So, I don't know how oil resistant fluke multimeter leads are, but I guess we're going to find out. We're getting 4.2 ohms, so I don't know why it's not working, because that should be sweet, but um, I'm going to guess maybe the connection isn't so good to the solenoid. Um, pretty well within tolerance. We'll just let's actually run some power through it, like some... Let's just make sure there's no diode. Let's actually, yeah, we're using the diode test mode. 0.3, what about this one? Better fix the problem. I ain't going to be happy if this is still going to shift harshly, but maybe it's got a dodgy connection somewhere or whatever. Maybe someone already replaced the solenoid. I don't think so, because it does the little things it would do if they were chowdered. Sorry, guys, just bear with me for a sec. Bit of a pain in the... Mm. 
My intel says the solenoid's working fine, but um, it might have a mechanical problem. It did show up a fault code, but this thing might have a mechanical issue. I'm going to replace it, get it back together, and yeah, I'm, I'm going to tighten up the spade terminals because they were not real tight. So more often than not, when I when I work on cars and you think, oh, you know, your solenoid's chowdered, the real problem turns out to be that the electrical connection's crap and it's not getting a good connection. So I'm going to very carefully try and squeeze the um, tabs on that spade terminal together. Now let me show you guys what I actually had to do to get the solenoid to come out. There's not enough room to get it out with the uh, transmission in one piece. So I had to remove this uh, accumulator. I didn't shout out of the gasket which is extremely good. I don't think I did. Uh, this is actually... No, I'm getting bloody fluid all over the camera. Nope, good. Anyway, that's where she lives, right there. If you pull out the accumulator, you've actually got enough room. You will get covered to head to toe in fluid. Now, that gasket looks fine, so I'm just going to reuse it. I'm not going to take the piston out. There's really nothing to see. It's a spring and a piston, and there's nothing interesting about that, unless it's worn or something, but it's not. So I'm going to get this thing back together. This is a pain in the ass. You guys have... I mean, look, I'm... This is after I've wiped myself down. I'm just completely covered in fluid. When you take the accumulator out, fluid will go all over the joint. So anyway, I'm not going to get my poor multimeter covered in more fluid. It tested out electrically fine, but that doesn't mean much. They can still test fine and not work properly. The only real way to test it is to, <laughs> to replace it. I mean, the uh, fault code in the computer said it definitely had abnormal current, so I'm going to guess it maybe it didn't have a very good connection or something. Uh, yeah, so anyway, tighten up your spade terminals. I mean, you don't want to pull it apart more than once. Well, it's all back together. That was an epic pain in the... Yeah. Ass. Anyway, I'm covered in fluid. It's in my mouth, it's in my hair. I'm sick of it. His driveway's covered in it. Ah, frig sakes, I tell you what. Now, the interesting thing is, as you've seen in the previous clip, the old solenoid actually tested fine. I'm pretty sure I showed that. Um, but I think the problem was more that these were really loose. I tightened them up. Now, it has a plastic, like, plug former. You are going to break it, partly or completely. Now, I broke it a little bit, but look, they're spade terminals. At the absolute worst, you could heat shrink the wires and blah, blah, blah. This really doesn't sit that close to anything, so I don't really see a problem with just plugging them straight on the terminals. But they were, they were loose, so I got a pair of you know, circlet plies and just carefully tensioned up the terminals. Now, they ain't going anywhere. If the little plastic guy falls apart, well, it's got a filter. I'm sure it's going to, you know, not allow it through to the pump. Uh, these transmissions actually have a hit-in or tap-in, uh, okay, technical term, interference fit metal cased single lip rubber seal, okay? That holds the pickup for the filter on and it just kind of plugs into it. And they are an epic pain in the ass to get out and to put in. I have been known to just put these, you know, new filters on with the old, if it's a nice tight fit. Now this one, I don't know. I really should remove it, but I am in pain. I, my neck is killing me. I honestly, I don't know if I can be screwed doing it. I mean, who cares? If, I, if it has a problem, I can always change it again, right? I mean... The more times the fluid's changed, the better, you know? It keeps it even more clean and happy. Oh, I don't know. I really feel really bad about doing that. Usually I flick them out with a large screwdriver and just tap the new one in with a socket, but I don't think I have it in me. Um, it's, only a, it's only a pickup. It's only fluid. Look, the old fluid's dark anyway. See, it was due for a change. It's still red, but look, that's, that's changed me. That colour's changed me. If your fluid's black, you waited too long, or it's burnt. Um, anyway, yeah, really don't think I need to show you under it again, but um, the main thing is clean up the mating uh, faces of the pan and uh, transmission um, case so that the new gasket seals. The gasket's a cork. Um, the new composition seems to have quite a lot of rubber in it, not much cork. That's this guy here. When you tighten these things up, they will never actually get to a stage of feeling tight. 
So if you get to the stage where you feel it's just getting firm, you tightened it too much. Now when I tighten these things up, I use the long extension as a screwdriver. I don't use the ratchet. You will over tighten it if you use anything but a screwdriver type arrangement. The tension on these cork gaskets is really, really low. They don't need much tension at all. So if you tighten it too much, what's going to happen is you split the cork gasket and it will leak and it's a nuisance because you've got to pull it apart and the fluid's expensive, right? So anyway, this I'm putting in is mineral based fluid. This transmission originally was designed for it anyway. The fluid does say it's compatible for this car. Synthetic fluid is probably technically better and should have a longer service life, but I change things so regularly it just doesn't matter, right? It's like synthetic engine oil has a longer service life than mineral oil, but I don't care. I'm not buying synthetic engine oil because I'm going to be changing it every 7,000 k's at the latest. So the more often you change the fluids, it just keeps it cleaner in there, especially if you drive the car hard. Anyway, I'm going to stop flapping my gums and I'm actually going to get on with it, but I will show you um, without getting absolutely just covered in fluid, right? Hell, go on to here. I'm really not going to see much because it's dark. Uh, no, I do have to change that seal, sweet as. No, it's just a bit of gasket sticking out. Well, that ain't going to help manners. Matters. I just removed that bit of gasket that was actually sitting in this, uh, that was sitting up here in this, um, that uh, pump inlet so well that could definitely have caused the problem you know maybe that's the problem all along because it's not going to get um the fluid's not just going to pump straight up so wow um it's just basically an overlap of the gasket where it isn't used the you know the sandwich plate gasket if you want to call it that i honestly am speechless this the people that last worked on this transmission was sloppy really really sloppy i just can't get over that it's um it was clearly sitting in there so i might still you know, i might change this uh oh, it's a pain in the ass i don't imagine how i'm going to get this out with a screwdriver i suppose they're a, they're a tight fit they're a nuisance to get out so uh basically if i do a close-up that's what it looks like installed at least that went on my hand and not on the camera lens again uh, if I show you the part without getting fluid all over the car or whatever, um, she's this guy right here. So it just taps in. You know, you probably can't see it well because it's in the packet. Let's bring it out to the light. That's what she looks like. It's just a it's just a hit in seal. So I'm going to try and remove the old one. Once you start trying to remove it, you're committed to removing it completely because it'll never seal again when you ruin the rubber. I don't really have any <laughs> easy suggestions. I suggest you go and get a seal removal tool, which I don't have. Um, yeah, I mean, they're a pretty tight fit, so I'm really nervous about this because I you just really hate doing this. Uh, nice flat blade screwdriver and just don't scratch it too much because if you scratch the uh, ball where the seal goes in, it's obviously not going to seal. The driveway guy. Uh, you really don't have a lot of choices, but see the top side, there's not much to get a grip on. But what I do basically with these is I just kind of, you know, use the screwdriver against the actual rubber seal itself. And then once you got it out a couple of millimetres, camera down, once you got it out a couple of millimetres, what I like to do is to get the screwdriver and just, you know, tap the edge in. Then, once you tap the edge in, you've actually got something you can lever against, like that. And then it will just sort of flip out, because it's not a real big tight interference fit, it's just, it just it's a tapping fit. But if you don't change that, um, these rubber, if I can get this thing to focus on the seal, the rubber seal in the middle of it itself, they shrink over the years. And I've no idea how old this filter kit is. It could be three years old. Uh, it could be older than that. It's 14, 15, 16. I think it's three years old when it was last, you know, when the date on that. Well, I know it is. I know it's three years old because it's got a date wheel on the actual filter itself. Now, but if this doesn't seal properly, excluding bits of gasket that some moron, this was done on a hoist. I mean, come on, everyone. If you're in the driveway, anyone could say, oh, well, you know, you're in the driveway, you know, your neck probably is killing you, and you can understand why you mightn't 
notice the gasket that you come on you you got a hoist you got no excuse if you got a hoist um, except sloppiness okay um, for the love of God like I said a lint free rag don't use a rag that's going to leave cotton fibers in the bloody transmission because it's not good for it you want to minimize the contamination not cause it yourself but anyway once you got this out all I usually do is get a socket and gently tap it in really they're a nuisance these are a pain but the alternative system they use on these things is actually a bigger pain because what they have is like a round donut seal that sits on top of the pickup and that doesn't hold the filter in you've got a wire clip that holds the filter in and they're a nuisance these things just have this that's all it holds the filter in that's why there's such a tight fit on the filter right well thanks for watching I don't think you need to see how to install it and I can't really show it to you anyway you guys have got to understand that I'm on my own and I'm covered in grease and oil and stuff and the camera's already chowdered because of it so for those of us with no imagination just get a socket that's a nice tight fit just tap it in with a hammer gently make sure it goes in straight that's what we're doing obviously not with the one that's ruined well this is just about clean enough to cook your roast dinner in in fact if you had an old transmission pan with you know it was clean you'd probably make a good roasting pan it's nice and big and it's a lot heavier than any roasting pan I've seen now you need this clean it's not good enough to just you know hose it out and put it back in you know you without breaking out a pressure cleaner what I did was I used a dirty rag which is the one I've been using to wipe my hands on well, then I used this which is not lint free but it's it, well it's sort of approaching lint free um, any bits of cork I've scraped off with my fingernail um, make sure you don't miss any whatever won't scrape off a really well used screwdriver that's got no edge whatsoever left on it it's probably not bad because it's not going to it's not going to kill it if you leave bits of cork on it it just won't seal however if you're really aggressive in the way you remove the cork especially on the aluminium valve body because if you scratch this you can sand it out with some uh, 1200 wet and dry but if you gouge the aluminium you ain't sanding that out in a hurry and it won't seal and you can't use gasket compound on a cork gasket because it will lubricate the mating faces of the gasket and when you tighten it up it will just spread it right apart it'll just end up completely split and it won't seal so don't use anything on the cork gasket if you have to use something rub some transmission fluid on the gasket if you're really paranoid about it sealing but clean no scratch scratches or gouges yeah you, you can someone's obviously used like a wire brush or something but be really really careful because you, seriously you, you're gonna never get it to seal if you gouge it really badly um, these things don't have a cork gasket they use a neoprene gasket and you can't over tighten it because the, the transmission pan on a Ford's totally different to this this is you know an old style sort of pan in my opinion I love those pans because you just tighten them up and they reach a limit it's a bit hard to explain but I'll have to show you one if you haven't seen one uh, I just don't have one that needs pulling off right now so anyway that's the secret to getting it to seal clean no scratching or gouging I know I keep repeating myself but I keep working on cars that people have just destroyed you know don't destroy it while you're trying to do preventative maintenance without getting under the car because it's sort of the sun's on a chowdered angle and it's just dark and you can't really see anything through the camera the guide to how clean the mating surface is is going to be like your fingernail like you've got little marks here but you know I can't feel them and they feel smooth the same with the valve body yeah sorry valve body the same with the uh, transmission case you could probably use some very fine sandpaper if you have to but you're going to remove material if you use sandpaper you're going to remove material and uh, the cork gasket's going to limit to what it's capable of if however you were an idiot and you used a screwdriver to lever the pan off or having a screwdriver in there you're going to have gouged it and you're going to have to sand it I suggest maybe 800 grit sandpaper carefully done um, it's not really too many alternatives you could very carefully use a stone or something but just sandpaper and when it's smooth to the touch and it doesn't catch on your nail it's probably fine um, so I'm going to put this thing back together I mean look you can't really screw it up because there's only one way the cork gasket can go see they drilled it differently so there's, there's a hole in each of these corners but there's not one here so you can't bugger it up it's, it will only go on one way so 
when you tighten up the pan bolts, I suggest doing it in a crisscross pattern. You know, blah blah blah. Just just make sure you don't over tighten it. Just honestly, you don't need to tighten these things much because everyone over tightens cork gaskets. It's part of the reason why cars don't really use them anymore because everyone tightens the shit out of them. Well, this concludes the job. Now. The transmission fluid that came out of the transmission, which was in this dirty old waste oil container, which no, it wasn't clean to start with, um, I didn't pour it on the ground, I actually poured it in the bottle that the transmission fluid came in, the replacement fluid. Only the most self-centered human being would dispose of oil or coolants or brake fluid anywhere but the proper um, registered um, disposal facilities. Like the, the the tip in, um, you know, this is Benalla, Victoria. The tip will take the um, fluid for free. You can just go there and pour it in their waste oil container. Uh, but for the love of God, don't go pouring it on down drains or putting, you know, transmission fluid on fence posts. It's it's not 19 whatever anymore. It's 2017. We got no excuse. We got facilities. Blah blah blah. Make sure your funnel's clean. This funnel got left out, so I had to clean it with a bit of petrol. That's all the fluid I have, so there's no point in even checking the fluid. But, four litres came out. It might have been four point something litres, because a lot of fluid went on the ground. A couple of hundred mils, maybe. Um, yeah, we're showing... Yeah, we, we are showing on the dipstick, as you can see. By the way, there's two scales on the dipsticks, usually. Maybe... Okay, this one... This one, um actually has two scales. I don't know if I can show you that because it's all shiny and fluidy. Ah, oh, annoying thing. We've got one that says cold, if it's ever going to focus. One that says cold and one that says hot. Pretty obviously you don't want the, the fluid up to the one that says hot when it's cold. So I'm going to drop this down. Um, by the way, at this point there's enough fluid in the transmission you could actually get under there and check it for leaks. I really don't see anything happening at the pan level. Uh, if I zoom in, it looks dry, so I'm pretty sure it isn't leaking. I really doubt it's going to. If it does, it's because I was conservative with the bolts on the um, pan. But you can nip them up a tiny bit if necessary. But the point of the cork gaskets is that when when it gets oil soaked into it, or fluid, which is oil anyway, basically, um, the, the cork will swell slightly, so it'll actually expand a little bit. I don't know what the expansion coefficient is, but anyway, that's the idea of a cork gasket, so just, yeah, just go conservatively when you tighten it up and make sure everything's clean. She won't leak. I'm going to get cleaned up and uh, there's a shower on its way because, yeah, I don't know what you can see. Uh, I'm pretty well covered in transmission fluid. It just, it's just, you know, you can't really see it. So, thanks for watching and bearing with me. Um... You know, this isn't impossible. It's n doing a service is actually a quick job. It's just the solenoids are pain. Now, hopefully, nothing got chowdered. Like, yeah, that that accumulator is kind of important. If that leaks, what'll happen is it'll slip. Uh, I can't imagine what I'm going to do if that's a problem because it's got a gasket. It's got the the sandwich plate between the valve body and the transmission body and then it's got a gasket either side so I'm pretty sure the gaskets will be fine the one on the on the accumulator came off fine I tightened it up as tight as it was you know originally so yeah just basically before you drive it just put on the brake go through all the gears prime up the fluid because you know it's lost a bit of fluid in the accumulator and all that so yeah be kind to it